Hi, I'm Jason Hand, an athletic trainer with MultiCare, and I'm here today to talk to you about shoulder health. The information we're going to go over today is pretty important just for anybody in general, but really important for those overhead athletes, such as your swimmers, volleyball players, baseball, softball players. Most people think about the shoulder, they typically think about your glenohumeral joint or that ball and socket, but there's a little bit more to the shoulder uh, than that. So everything kind of needs to work together just because of how much motion there is at the shoulder that it's pretty important to have good mobility, but also good strength. If everything doesn't function well together, you're more likely to suffer some injuries such as impingement in the front of your shoulder, uh, injuries to your bicep tendon, injuries to your rotator cuff, as well as injuries on the backside, certainly where your scapula meets your spine, that scapula thoracic area. A lot of times we'll see individuals with some pain, certainly at rest, some aching and some throbbing type of scenarios, pain at night, certainly pain with overhead reaching or some loss of function with certain movement. So some of the ways to help prevent these injuries from happening in the first place is to work on the function, the mobility of your muscles and the strength of all the muscles involved in that area. So what we're gonna go over today are a few things that you can incorporate from a warm-up standpoint as well as a strengthening component to your workouts. We'll start with the lats, just the muscles on the side here that go along your torso. And you wanna put a little bit of pressure on those muscles and just kind of rolling back and forth and get kind of some of those painful sweet spots. So we're going to do this and every other thing that we do here about 15 to 20 times, just kind of nice, slow and easy on the way through those muscle areas. Okay, now we're going to transition and we're going to move the foam roller a little bit. So now the foam roller is going to be in line with your spine. So Aaron's going to lay with that parallel right along our spine. And we are going to work on now the muscles kind of in the front of your chest that also, again, play a pretty big role in the shoulder. So what she's going to do is kind of rotate and get her forearms as close to the floor as possible. Her elbows are going to be kind of towards her kidneys, so you're going to make a W with your arms. And then she's going to try to trace her forearms all along the floor, come up as high as she can, and all the way back down. And again, you're going to repeat that about 15 to 20 times, and you should really feel that tension, that stretch through the, the front, through your chest. And now what she's going to do is she's going to put her arms out straight at shoulder height and rotate or basically roll towards one shoulder blade and the other without trying to fall off the foam roller. So that'll help loosen up some of the muscles from the spine to the shoulder blade. And you can also add in kind of alternating one palm up, one palm down as you rotate as well as you roll side to side. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is reach up towards the ceiling, uh, extend those arms out as best you can. And as you roll side to side now, you're gonna reach that one arm towards the ceiling. Uh, so you're gonna roll towards one side and then reach with that opposite arm towards the ceiling. And then you can also reach to the same side that you roll to. And now the next one we're going to do is basically just going to give yourself a little bit of love, hug yourself, open up that space between your spine and your shoulder blades, and again, roll back and forth as best you can. Good. And that concludes a little bit of the foam roll warm-up that you can do. Another great way to kind of warm up your shoulders is by a good old-fashioned jump rope. Now we're going to transition to some other exercises you can do to actually strengthen some of the muscles. Okay, so now we're going to get started with some exercises you can do to help strengthen your rotator cuff. So to start with, one thing that's going to be really important is to make sure that uh, the muscles are kind of working together. So what we really want to do is kind of what's called pack your shoulder to make sure that everything is in a good position here. So she's going to do a small little shoulder shrug. So when she does that little shrug and everything, you can kind of notice here what we want to do is really make sure we're getting all these muscles turned on, utilizing a little bit more of the lower the trap here and take a little bit of work off of your upper trap there. So all your muscles back here should really be working to help stabilize that scapula as we work on the rotator cuff. And if you notice, she's got a towel rolled up in between her arm and her torso. That's to just help a little bit of co-contraction of your rotator cuff to really help stabilize those muscles even a little bit more. 
and we're gonna work on external rotation here first. She's gonna keep her elbow pinned against her side and just rotate through that joint up here, that glenal femoral joint. And at the end, even doing a little bit of wrist extension to help get a, even a little bit more activation out of the rotator cuff. Okay, and now we're gonna work on internal rotation, which typically you're a little bit stronger with, so you might need to move out a little farther or just use a different resistance. But same principle with the towel, keeping your elbow in at your side, and you're gonna bring your hand towards your belly button. And control that back out. Okay, and now Aaron, we're gonna go through some protraction and retraction exercises, which help with a little bit of that scapular control and your serratus anterior, which is really important. So what she's gonna do is essentially just act as if she's gonna punch straight ahead and control those arms and those shoulder blades coming back towards her spine without too much movement at the elbows. And now we're gonna do retraction, which is essentially just bringing your shoulder blades towards your spine. So we're gonna row without, again, bending your elbows, squeezing those shoulder blades and then letting those under control come back. Okay. And staggering your feet can sometimes help take a little bit of stress off your low back and also make sure you're really engaging kind of through your trunk, your torso during all these exercises. Okay. And now we're going to work on some diagonal patterns, which are really important for those overhead athletes. So what we're going to do is start with that thumb towards the anchor point. We're going to work through a little external rotation at the shoulder, extension at the wrist. And again, make sure we're really focusing on those muscles in the back of your shoulder and controlling that band back. Now we're gonna do another diagonal pattern and she's gonna start again, thumb at that anchor point, basically towards the front of her hip and you're gonna imagine yourself basically pulling out a sword. So we're going to externally rotate the shoulder, supinate at the wrist and really extend back and control and coming back towards that anchor point and focusing on the back of her shoulder here, coming up nice and high. Okay. And another exercise you can do with bands, certainly as you feel more comfortable in advancing your exercises, is going to be a row with some external rotation. So what we're going to do is and try to squeeze the shoulder blades first, lead with those elbows, do a good row, and then while you're at shoulder height, add in some external rotation, reverse that process here, and then back towards the anchor point, letting those shoulder blades again go through some protraction. Okay, so another few advanced exercises you can do that are a little bit more sports specific, or at least in tailing with a ball, is utilizing one of these little med balls. And what Erin's gonna do is just have her arm out straight and you're gonna try to drop that ball but catch it before it hits the ground and do that repetitively. You can do this for even counting time as your parameter in your sets. And to make it even more sports specific, we're gonna go through a throwing motion where you throw that up towards the ceiling and then catch that on the way back down. So for this, it's pretty important to get your elbow up a little bit more. There you go. So this will be good for your overhead athletes, your throwers, whether it's javelin, baseball, softball, even your swimmers, wrestlers, all those things will really be helpful, but definitely those individuals that do a little bit more throwing. Okay, now we're gonna transition to a couple of different exercises. So we're gonna get rid of that ball and we're gonna start working on a little bit more of your scapular movement and your serratus anterior. So you can start with a modified plank position if you want being on your hands and knees essentially. And then what we're gonna do, again, keeping your elbows locked, we're gonna go through that protraction and retraction motion where you bring your shoulder blades towards your spine and then really push those out away as far as you can getting a lot good scapular movement there, working on those serratus anterior muscles. Okay. And then you can always transition there, bringing your knees off the ground, getting on your feet in a high plank position and doing the same. And this again is where core strength comes into play as well, making sure you're tight in your trunk, your hips, and in a good, nice line. Great job. So those are all really good things that can help you develop some good shoulder strength and we've given you a lot of useful information, hopefully, to help guide you through some shoulder strengthening and prevention. And if at any point, though, you do have concerns about shoulder pain, then we definitely recommend you consulting a healthcare provider before really starting any of this. And we'd love to see you over at Multicare Orthopedics and Sports Medicine.